Today is day 16. Capitalization. Do not capitalize the first word after a semicolon. And they show you what a semicolon looks like. Unless it is a proper noun. And then they give you an example of a sentence. Now the thing that's interesting is that in the sentence that they gave you to practice on, um, it doesn't have a semicolon in it. So if you want to refresh in your mind how a semicolon works in a sentence and what it looks like, go back to day 11. Um, day 11 had a semicolon uh, practice sentence, and so you'll have two examples there of how you use a semicolon in a sentence. All right, so really the capitalization sentence is all review and practice. Though born in Scotland, A.G. Bell, who invented the telephone in 1876, is considered an American inventor. First word in the sentence, always capitalized, though. Though born in Scotland, Scotland is a country capitalized. A.G. Bell, okay, we've got somebody's name, the A, the G, and the B are all capitalized. Who invented the telephone in 1876 is considered an American inventor. So the A in American is capitalized. All right, punctuation. Place a colon after the greeting of a, a business letter, and then they have the example, Dear Mr. Wynn, and after Mr. Wynn, you'll see a colon. A colon is when you've got the two dots, one on top of the other. And so if you were um, doing this letter, you don't have to write out ladies of the board, just put the punctuation on there. Um, it would be ladies of the board, and then you can see I have a colon there, two dots. Next section, subject verb. The subject of an imperative sentence is often you understood. Uh, and then they show that you mark that as a parenthesis, you. Um, so the example is don't run away. What that really means is you don't run away. We just don't say the word you, it's understood. Um, you learned about imperative sentences way back on day one, on the very first day of co-op. Um, on the board when we were working through this stuff. Um, we, so if you look back to day one, you'll see examples of imperative sentences. Anyways, take a look at the example. Three, take this. They want you to underline the subject once and the verb or verb phrase twice. Take this. Who takes this? You take this. It's understood. They didn't say it. So you is the subject. And you can see how I wrote that. That's exactly how you should put it on your page. In parentheses, the word you, and then you underline you once. You take. Take is the verb. It tells us what you're doing, what the sentence, what's happening in the sentence. You take. And then I also included this as the direct object. You don't have to, but we did learn about it uh, a couple of weeks ago, what a direct object is. It completes the verb. And this is completing the verb take. So you take this. All right, moving right along, we next have adjectives. Today we're learning about predicate adjectives. A predicate adjective is a describing word that occurs after the verb and describes the subject of the sentence. Our homecoming queen is friendly. So if we look at that, the subject of the sentence is queen, is is the verb, and friendly is the PA or predicate adjective. All right, um, queen is friendly. So now they have an example sentence for you and they tell you, look carefully at the directions, underline the subject once and the verb or verb phrase twice Label the predicate adjective PA. Okay, so we have our sentence here. His new wheels are chrome with wide spokes. And I'm going to suggest for this length of a sentence, when you're trying to figure out what the subject and verb are, is to go and cross out the prepositional phrases. Remember this sheet with all the prepositions on it? If you're not sure of your prepositional phrases, grab that and then look at this sentence. His new wheels are chrome with wide spokes. Oh, with wide spokes is a prepositional phrase. I'm going to cross it out. That way I'm not confused. I'm not thinking that with wide spokes is the subject or the verb. It's just not necessary to the sentence. So now I have to figure out what is the, su the sentence about? What's the subject? Okay. 
Uh, and what's the verb? What's, what's happening or what is being? All right, so we look at this. Wheels are, that would be the subject and the verb. So you would underline wheels once, are, twice, and then you have a, descripting, a descriptive word that comes after that, that is describing the wheels, and that's chrome. Okay, you could say shiny. Um, his new wheels are chrome. So chrome is a predicate adjective. And I'll show you what this should look like then on your piece of paper, on your worksheet. His new wheels are chrome. Uh, if it said chrome wheels, you could see even easier how chrome is an adjective describing wheels. But the way that this sentence is constructed, it just happens to have the verb are in between. Okay, predicate adjective, P-A. The last section is sentence combining. Woo, you guys have four sentences to combine into one today. I'm sure that you will do very good with it and I look forward to reading them. Thanks, God bless you.